It has long been proven that police unions help officers increase wages and benefits. This study from the 1980s states unions have helped increase municipal workers' wages by 5% on average. But there's something else in many police union contracts that skeptics say lead to a lack of accountability for misconduct. A lot of us in this field have been, you know, sounding this, you know, warning signal for years and years and years. John Rappaport is an assistant law professor at the University of Chicago Law School. He specifically studies police unions and officer misconduct. He says most police contracts, including Minneapolis's, include, quote, extraordinary protections. There will be rules like um, you can't speak to the officer until 48 hours after the incident. You have to speak to the officer last, so you interview all your other witnesses first. In some cases, you have to actually give the officer um, copies of all the other witness statements as well as copies of any body cam footage or dash cam footage. Rappaport wanted to measure if unions had an effect on police misconduct. So he turned to Florida, where the Supreme Court there allowed sheriff's deputies in all 67 counties to collectively bargain in 2003. So he compared the severe violent misconduct complaints for eight years before that and eight years after unionization. When officers in Florida, which is um, our, our research setting, uh, when officers in Florida gained the right to bargain collectively, the rate of serious violent misconduct incidents went up by 40%. Now, 40% may sound like a lot, but these types of incidents don't happen very often. According to the report, the increase was the equivalent of one officer being involved in one violent misconduct incident every five years per agency. However... Rappaport says it raised the average significantly for sheriff's departments. Meanwhile, in the same time span, city police departments' misconduct stats didn't change. Did you see this increase in, in violent misconduct across the board in every county? And we are confident that this is not being driven by uh, one or two or three sheriff's offices, that this is a general effect. We found evidence of an increase even in sheriff's offices that did not actually unionize. And what we say in our study is that we think this is evidence of what we call a shadow effect. Once sheriff's deputies generally in the state have the right to bargain collectively, even if they choose not to, they can now threaten to bargain collectively. So I asked our expert Rappaport this question. I said, is it fair to say unionization and collective bargaining is a problem? I mean, 11% of workers belong to a union in this country. Plus police have an incredibly dangerous and unique job, as we know. Uh, he said, correct, bargaining itself may not be the problem, but it's some of the protections that is afforded to them in the bargaining process where he sees a problem with accountability and reaching accountability. And that's something we've heard other police chiefs in the Twin Cities talk about as well, Jana. Well, Chris, what is it that's in the Minneapolis Police Union contract that your expert refers to as extraordinary? What's in there? Well, he wasn't just talking specifically about Minneapolis as being extraordinary, but contracts he sees in police unions across the country. And, and I asked him to take a look at Minneapolis and see what he's talking about. And he said, yeah, there are some certain things in there, like uh, if an officer is accused of misconduct and, ha and has to be interviewed by investigators, it says in the union contract that there must be two days, 48 hours before an investigating officer can even ask them for their story. There's also things in the arbitration process about how the arbitrator is selected that uh, he says sometimes they see problems with finding uh, an impartial arbitrator. Also, any misconduct complaints that do not result in discipline, then they're erased from the officer's file according to the contract. So in the case of ex-officer Chauvin, he had 17 complaints and we're not sure what those are because it's not public. So the part, what we're not sure of is what the nature of those complaints are, because we do know that there were complaints. We knew there, yeah, we know there were complaints, but the content we can't see. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. Got it.